Okay, well I can already smell it from here. So these little bluish guys, they have quite an odor. And that odor is anise. Um, so, well, or a chemical version of it, it's, it's really intense. And these are um, anise funnel cap, Clytosabe odora, odora Latin for odor. So, oh yeah, I mean really intense and, and nice odor um, and it really helps identifying them. When they're younger, they're even more blue and they're losing a bit of their blueness, um, bluishness when maturing. And interestingly, we've been doing here now for four years our funga study, flora, fauna, funga. Funga is the collective of all mushrooms. And uh, with the Puget Sound Mycological Society. And we've been going out since 2016. We try to be here every second week during mushroom season. And then we try to do an inventory, what's out here. And for example, um, we haven't found this mushroom yet, which is, is around here in the Pacific Northwest, but we didn't find it. And uh, I, uh, I checked the list when I came across these guys a couple days ago um, and it's, we, we don't have it yet. So for our inventory, what we would do, we would get out our cell phones and where's the cell phone? That's the usual process. Where is the phone? Um, and then we would go onto iNaturalist um, where we upload the data of what we find. So uh, iNaturalist would give us the exact coordinations of the place. We would say uh, make a new, um, a new observation and then we take pictures which shows the top of the mushroom and under the cap so we can see all the characteristics, take a picture and that picture then will go online. Then we give it a name. Um, and we also uh, will take notes, like in this case, strong odor of anise or anise. And um, if there's color changes, tastes, all these things you only get when a mushroom is fresh, fresh is important to take. And often we would also uh, use better, uh, better photographic, uh, better cameras to take good pictures. Cell phones are quite all right, but have their limitations. And then um, later on, we, uh, we dry the samples uh, at 135 degrees so that the DNA doesn't get uh, destroyed. And then we keep the dry samples and submit them for DNA analysis. So, and that then uh, can tell us if we have sometimes a new species or a new location for a known species or, okay, this is what grows everywhere around here and there has been plenty of documentation even on the DNA level. But we already um, found some things, some new stuff within our 500 collections and also a uh, new distribution area like mushrooms that weren't known to, uh, to exist on the West Coast showed up here. Um, so this is part of the Puget Sound Mycological society's uh, bridal trail fungi study and there's not a single study in the world about one forest or one location and f and, and and the fungal inventory where you don't find new stuff the curve slows lo down a little bit but always keeps growing and even mushrooms show up 50 years later you know where wait a minute have they been underground the mycelium all the time nobody knows so really interesting uh, aspect and very helpful and something badly needed and all of this is citizen science so uh, we are not professional mycologists um, we dedicate our time to do that volunteer work and we do learn a lot doing that kind of work and actually in Europe in the 20th century I think 60 or 70 percent of all new species, mushroom species, were described by lay mycologists. So it's a big tradition in mycology that many, many people, specialists, have other jobs while doing mycology um, as an obsession, I'd rather say.
So don't you collect a specimen and put it in the Burke Museum too? Yes. So, um, well, at the moment, since we still take samples out for DNA and then microscopy and so on, we, we keep the specimens. But they will then be deposited in the Burke Museum, which is an important part because these mushrooms need to be accessible in a fungarium so that if researchers who work on a specific small aspect, you know, like Clytosabe funnel caps, but the group around Odora or so, they know exactly where to find it and then they can work on it and, um, and ask for the specimens that can be exchanged between uh, fungaria or hung uh, herbaria. Why do they call that one? Why is it a fun uh, funnel cap? Oh, the funnel cap. Uh, Clytosabe which is Greek for funnel cap. Clito is the funnel and Cybe is the cap in Attic Greek. Unfortunately, mycology is riddled with Greek terminology because I guess the botanists already used up so much of the Latin that they were forced, darn it, you know, this is already a plant. This is a plant too. So they used a lot of Greek, um, which is often much harder to associate than, than Latin. But um, so the funnel cap is, it's not as pronounced in this mushroom, but the gills will go down and it makes like a funnel shape. So some of its close relatives are much more funnel shaped, but the gills are decurrent. It means they go down the stem like a current of water, right? Um, which is an important uh, criteria for many Clytosibi, but not all. So <laughs> as, as things go. And that's the great thing now about DNA. DNA sorts these things in a certain way and helps us to decide which characteristics are really of evolutionary significance. Where does a mushroom belong in the tree of life? Um, before it was all, it's all a human decision. We focus on this aspect versus that aspect. And there was always discussion in the community. No, you got to look at the gills. No, look at the spores. Look at this, that. What, what really decides what is related? And DNA doesn't give us really that much of a choice anymore. Okay, they are related. Now, what do they share? Ah, that's the important traits. But when you are identifying them after the forays, don't you look at them under a microscope, look at the spores and... Um, and try to figure out what they are. On the so top. that's the, definitely the classical approach is um, microscopy. Well, we key them out, um, but these days with uh, the image revolution, we use much more images and that gets us much closer. But then, of course, we go into the descriptions, compare these, uh, the traits, and, um, and there's some people are mightily upset doing these things without the traditional approach of lots of microscopy. And to do that, to do good mycology, that is definitely still essential. But citizen science, we can go pretty far without that. And if you have DNA on top and the DNA, the names that are given is, is the DNA name is backed up by the first collection which got that name, then, you know, we can just go by that. But so this is definitely a shortcoming and, and, uh, and, and some in the, in the mycology community are, are very upset of that kind of superficial approach without a you know, description of every tiny detail. I say, hey, well, we take the pictures, we taste them, we smell them. So it's good, it's not perfect, but we get much more information much faster and, and, and we have so much more information about species distribution we can collect now in probably in one year um, nationwide what took decades before because it's so many more people and yes some of the information is is there's lots of mistakes out on these citizen science projects so it takes an expert to make the distinction what's right what's wrong or what gets close but it's 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 in the system and then we can work with it